Hello and welcome. I'm Mike and this is the Geek Zone. And if you would like to take your stock standard clacky keyboard from sounding like this to this, then stay tuned as I take my Keychron K4 V2 mechanical keyboard from the stock standard sound to this dreamy, creamy, thocky, beautiful sounding keyboard. I've always wanted to build my own custom mechanical keyboard from scratch, but I decided that my first foray into keyboard customization and building would be to take a stock keyboard and make it almost perfect. So let's jump into this video where I take you through all the steps that I took to completely transform my keyboard and uh, there'll be a sound test at the end. So I encourage you to watch all the way through and watch that video and you'll get the sound test at the end. So we start by taking off each of the keycaps so that we can expose the switches underneath. Uh, this is a process that will take some time. Uh, you will get a bit of a rhythm for it. And so let me just speed up this video and I will take off all of these keycaps. So now we need to take off the case and then I was able to um, get access to pulling the board out. So this is a um, pole mounted uh, PCB. Uh, obviously it's not the best. You would probably want gasket mounted PCB for the ultimate typing experience. However, when I purchased this board, I didn't really know what exactly I was looking for. So here I am just taking the board out with the uh, PCB uh, mounting plate for the switches and the switches out as all in one unit. Just need to disconnect that battery on the bottom side so that you can separate uh, the case from the PCB. And it can be a little bit finicky, so just be careful, don't yank those wires too hard. I don't want to rip them out of the socket. So now that we have the uh, PCB and case separated, um, it's probably a good idea to clean the case out a little bit. It may have got some, you know, bits and pieces in there, depending on the cleanliness of your environment. And one of the first things that I think that I will do to help um, with the sound quality is the tape mod. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the tape mod. It's 
quite uh, popular amongst the mechanical keyboard community but it basically works by just adding a few layers of masking tape or painters tape something of the of that likes um, to the PCB and it just helps with um, dampening any reverberation and resonance that can be heard inside of the case now the one thing that I've forgotten here while I'm putting on a big slice of tape is that uh, as a pole mount PCB um, I'm actually covering the mounting holes and as such I had to kind of patchwork the um, tape on and in retrospect I probably could have done this a lot easier by say putting the tape like putting the three layers of tape on because that's how many is recommended and then using a screwdriver to poke through the holes and cut very carefully with like say a craft knife or something the holes away but instead what I did was I made my life hard and I cut little bits of random pieces and made the shapes that I want which could have a, a good acoustic effect but and so yeah basically it looks like this and it could look a lot nicer uh, especially if you have a gasket mount you wouldn't need to cut any holes at all um, maybe just leave a little hole for a battery connector like I have and that's about it so I now need to go ahead and get all of the stabilizers off and I need to get all the switches off and here I am looking like a dummy trying to pull my stabilizers off before I've pulled the switches off which obviously is not going to happen um, so let me just cut through to taking all of the switches out the stuff off and you can hear it's very rattly uh, just goes to show how much uh, those stabilizers were actually rattling on that uh, mounting plate which is very annoying so uh, one of the things that you can really do to fix the sound quality of a keyboard um, just a simple one is just lube the stabilizers you don't even have to do the switches that will make a massive difference to the sound quality of your board I've just gone through and I've put all my new Duroc V2 stabilizers on and I've used the tape mod to um, make them a little bit more secure and they have been hand lubed by me so they should be ready to go and now we're going to start with the switches so here I am taking apart um, all of the switches there's quite a number of them uh, I think there's exactly 90 on my 96% keyboard which means I have zero room for error because uh, I bought um, nine packs of 10. Silly me. I should have actually gone ahead and bought uh, 100, but uh, I, expect, I actually was intending to put these switches on another board that was, um, I think like 84 keys or something. So I thought oh, I'll have a few extras, but um, I, should have, I should have definitely bought uh, some more switches. So what I'm doing here is just uh, applying a small amount of lube or what I thought was a small amount of lube. I thought I was putting a very, very small amount of lube on, but apparently I was not putting a small enough amount of lube on. And I may have over lubed these keys a little bit. Uh, I would suggest watching a video by uh, Teha on how to lube switches. I watched this video and I still somehow managed to over lube. Uh, less is absolutely more when it comes to lubing switches. And believe it or not, it thinks, you may think that you're putting nothing on your switches. However, you are definitely putting lube on those switches. So uh, be very, very sparingly with the lube. And here I am with a nice tub of 90 lubed switches. And that took oh, more time than I care to admit. I think that was my first time. And I may have spent somewhere close to seven hours between lubing stabilizers, dismantling switches, lubing switches, and reassembling switches. So it was um, extremely painful. Uh, I don't recommend um, doing this if you don't have a lot of spare time on your hands. So I'm just packing up everything. Uh, you know, clean workspace is a, is a happy workspace. So now let's jump forward to putting some polyfill in. And this is, I mean, you can put anything in your board to help with the sound deadening. I went with polyfill because it was recommended to me, but um, in a future video, I'm actually going to try using um, memory foam from a pillow. I've also heard that is really, really good. And probably one of the reasons why I went polyfill was just because because they're pole mounted because a pole mounted PCB it's a little bit easy to manipulate around stuff 
Um, but in some ways, uh, I don't know, maybe memory foam would have been easier. I'm not sure. So here we are, we're chucking in uh, all the polyfill and I'm just massaging it around uh, the, the standoffs. And um, yeah, let's just um, skip through as I complete that. Yep. So now that it is full and it looks very full, it squashes down quite a bit. Here I am trying to push the PCB down and uh, obviously I've got a little bit of, um, I guess, fuzz around the edges and uh, you can kind of, you can use a little um, spludger tool or, or a knife or something, just be gentle to kind of push that back underneath. You just have to make sure that your standoffs are exposed enough that you can get a screw into the hole. Um, one of the tricks that I used was to kind of just brush the top of the standoff to push the, the polyfill away, which is kind of the advantage of it, I guess. And here I am putting on the switches. So I'm actually just um, fitting the switches to the mounting plate first, and then I will put everything over the top of the PCB in one go. Um, I think this is probably the best way to go. I, I don't really know. I'm not sure how I would do this given a second time at it. Um, I may try and put them in one by one straight into the PCB. I'm not sure. So let's just uh, fast forward this and here we are got all the switches in and now just placing it back into the board getting close to the moment of truth so here i am just kind of uh, reconnecting the top mounting plate with the pcb and obviously there's a bit of um, spring back because of the polyfill so now i have to put all the screws back in and get that locked down and there we are, screwing it down. I only put two in initially just so I could test that there wasn't any issues before putting all the screws in. I would hate to screw everything in and then realize I have to take a back part for some reason. Um, so yeah, and then I'm just doing a keyboard test right now. So um, using a keyboard testing site just to make sure that every key works. As you can see, I've just plugged it in, all the lights are coming on and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy that it at least turns back on. And it seems that most of my keys so far are working. I had a couple that didn't appear to work and then I just pushed them really hard and they started working. So obviously there was just a contact issue there. I'm not sure why some went in and some didn't uh, considering they were all pre-attached to the plate first, but just weird nuance type stuff, I guess. Uh, I would say I did have one weird issue and I'm going to show you that now as I go through and test this board I actually found there was one key that just refused to work and um, I also noticed that it seemed like it wasn't sitting correctly in the board and I was like hold on a second the tilde key and you can see there that um, even though it's got the markings for uh, the holes, it, it it didn't have the holes. So something, I don't know whether that was a manufacturing issue or not, but uh, it meant that I had to chop the um, stabilizing poles off my tilde key switch and um, make that a three pole, three pin um, switch just for that one socket, which is kind of weird. So here I am putting the uh, uh, case uh, edges back on and now I've got most of the keys back on, just finishing that off. So almost done, almost ready to start typing on it. And as I get that completed, I am going to do a typing test for you guys. So if you want to hear the full typing test, then now's the time. Thank you for watching guys. Um, this, is, this concludes the video from, from my point of view. So have a listen to the typing test and tell me what you think. How much better did it sound in your opinion? And was it worth the time and effort to make it happen? So, I'll catch you guys in the next video.
first sound test with the new board, so spacebar.